trying to get an early start on supper today. I'm going to make a recipe that's really easy. I can, I've got a busy day ahead so I can put it in the crock pot and just kind of forget about it, the main part of the meal. I'll have to worry about the rest of it this evening, but I think I've got some easy plans for that too. Uh, the recipe is one, one of the more simple ones. There are many easy recipes in mine and Jim's cookbook, uh, but this is one that's really, really easy. And I, it's on page 50. I remember this time to tell you what page it's on. And I'm gonna read to you the little part that uh, intro. This is one of the recipes that I put in the book and it's pork roast with kraut. So it says, passing along food traditions to the next generation is widely celebrated in Appalachian culture. When I was first married, there was considerable reliance on kitchen knowledge my mother and grandmother had shared. A pleasant and rewarding surprise came from learning traditional food ways from my new family. My mother-in-law, Miss Cindy, taught me a deliciously easy way to cook an outstanding pork roast with a jar of kraut. So you're going to need two to, a two to three pound pork roast. And um, you could use whatever kind of pork roast you like. I like the tenderloin or the butt works well. This is part of a tenderloin roast. Salt, pepper, and flour. And then uh, whatever kind of oil you would like. I use mostly olive oil, butter, lard, whatever you want to use. Wesson oil, vegetable oil and one quart of homemade kraut. And store-bought can also be used, of course, if you wanna buy, buy you some kraut. So all I've done so far is I seasoned my roast and I dredged it in flour, seasoned the flour actually is the way I do it. And then I had a, a, one of my frying pans over on the stove with olive oil heated, and then I just kind of browned each side of it. That's all, that's what I've done so far. Now I'm gonna put it in my crock pot. Today I'm using a crock pot. You could do this in a, Dutch oven or a bacon oven dish, anything that you've got. It's actually in the uh, directions in the books what it says. Dutch oven or roasting pan. Pour kraut with liquid over the roast. Cook, cover and cook at 350 degrees until done. And potatoes and stuff can be added if you wanted to make it a complete meal. I'm not going to do that because I think I'm going to make, I've been wanting some mashed potatoes, so I think I'm going to make mashed potatoes. Uh, but it goes, this is a meal that goes really well, says uh, in the cookbook. Of course, almost all of mine say that if it's a savory meal, I say it goes very good with a cake of cornbread. So it certainly does. I've lost my, go get my tongs here. So I just, I'm going to put this in my crock pot today instead of worrying about it in the oven. Either way works fine. And if you were in a hurry and you didn't have time to dredge the, do the flour part, it still works out really good. I've done that when I just didn't have time to do that. Maybe I was about to leave for work or something like that. And I just put the roast directly in my crock pot and put the crowd on it and walked out the door. So you can do it either way. But this is how simple it is though. So I've got, I had a, ca a camera malfunction. So I was saying I put the pork roast in the crock pot and now I've got a jar of our homemade kraut that we made last year. I'm not going to drain it. Mm, smells so good. I'm tempted to get me a bite of it. I really can't resist doing that. So I think I will. I haven't even had breakfast yet, but I'm going to get me a little taste here. Mm. So good. Mm. Very tart, but good. Anyway, I'm not going to drain it or anything. I'm just going to pour the whole jar over the kraut. I mean, over the kraut, over the roast. I did have a lot of liquid in this one. Yours may not have that much liquid, but either way, it'll work out just fine. I'm going to have to get me something. Or maybe I'll save that for me to, me to eat with my breakfast. And now that I've got it just covered with the kraut, I'm going to, I've got my crock pot over here. I'm going to put this part, my insert back in it. I'm going to turn it on low and I'm going to let it cook the rest of the day until supper time. And I got to go do some other things. And then after that, I'll show you the rest of what I'm cooking for supper tonight. So I got a few things done and then I decided, I've been thinking about what I wanted to make for dessert. Corey and Austin's going to eat with us. And the men are working on our trees, cutting the trees around our garden. So I was thinking, well, I wish I had something uh, that I could take them as a little treat later in the day. And then I was thinking about our dessert. thought, well, what could I make? I was thinking about making a cobbler, but that don't really translate well. So then I decided I would make a chess cake. I'm going to make a chess cake. And that way we can, you know, it's more like a you're holding a piece of bread or something instead of something oozing out. So I can send them some and we can enjoy it ourselves. 
I have a video about chess cake. I'll link to that um, and you can watch it. It's a, a recipe that starts with a base of a just a cake mix. You could make your own cake mix if you don't want to buy one. If you want to buy one, uh, it's what I usually do. It makes it that much easier. And it has like a cream cheese kind of feeling. It's not a cake that you need to ice or frost or anything like that. I think some people sprinkle maybe some powdered sugar on it right before they serve it, but I don't ever do that. But it's a cake that um, is common in my area of Appalachia and I think in lots of other places too. And it goes by other names too, ooey gooey butter cake. I learned when I posted the video of uh, me making the chess cake and, and different names. But this, in our area, it's just called a chess cake. It's really, really good though. It's time for me to finish up supper. I've got some of my potatoes already peeled. I'm gonna chop them up so that I can make my mashed potatoes. I've got some corn thawing. I'm just gonna do corn, cornbread. The mashed potatoes will have the kraut with the pork roast. Of course, we have the yummy cake. Turned out great. So, so many different ways for people to uh, mashed potatoes. It's Everybody has their own way of doing it as it should be, and you just have to find your way. A lot of people, um, when it comes to actually boiling the potatoes, most people, I think, do it the same. You might make your chunks bigger or something. I usually make mine pretty little because I want them to cook pretty fast. I'm always in a hurry, so I do my, mine in little cubes just so they'll cook faster. When it comes to actually mashing them and what you mix with them, lots of people have different ways of doing that too. Uh, of course, there's all kinds of great recipes that you know have cheese or sour cream or something like that in them. Those are all delicious, I know. Um, I left a bad place in this potato here. Then there's, um, you know, even if you just go with the simple butter and milk, there's different ways of doing that. Miss Cindy, when she made mashed potatoes, and hers were good, they were fine, she thought that it was really great to save the water that your potatoes are cooked in because after all, they have that potato flavor. So that's what she used to actually, um, when she got ready to mash them, she saved that water, drained them, and then put it back a little bit at a time. And I can't really remember if she used any additional milk or cream or anything like that or not. I'm not sure. So I, I think Granny, she didn't save the water, but she just used a little milk and a little butter. And she likes her, she makes her mashed potatoes. Once we, when you figure that part out, then it's the whether or not how you want them whipped, how you want them mashed. So Granny liked to leave like some body in hers. Miss Cindy did too. I like mine really smooth, uh, really on the soft side. And so much so that in some of my vid videos when I've shared, you know, maybe a they saw a photo or a, not a photo, a video where I was making mashed potatoes. They were just on the plate. They said, oh my goodness, I can't believe you use instant potatoes. Well, I don't. I don't use instant potatoes, but instant potatoes can get soft like that. I just use a, a lot of uh, what I like to mix in. I drain the water. I don't use it like Miss Cindy did, but I like to use either milk or if, I don't, if I'm almost out of milk, I'll use half and half, but most of the time milk and butter. And so when I'm ready for that part, I'll show you how I do it. But I do like mine on the, um, it's not really runny, but on the softer side, I guess you would say, instead of those firmer mashed potatoes like Granny likes. When I'm peeling my potatoes, I usually um, used to use a paring knife all the time. I use one of the peelers now, typically. Sometimes I'll still use a paring knife, but when I was growing up and uh, I would be helping with supper or something, Pap told me one time uh, when I was, I guess I was helping him or maybe me and him together were cooking something. He said, Tipper, I sure wouldn't want to be with you if it was hard times and all I had to eat was taters. And I said, why? And he said, because you leave way too much potato on the peeling. So he was uh, getting on to me for that. So if I use a peeler, I'm not as bad to do that. I will tell you a funny story. One time when me and Matt, uh, we hadn't been dating very long and we were with a, a big group of people who had went camping, riding horses and camping. And 
we were going to cook supper there. I wasn't really in charge of cooking it, but I was just trying to help. And so somebody sent me to the creek to peel the potatoes and wash them. And so I was down there. It wasn't a very big creek, but it was a creek. And I was down there washing the potatoes and peeling them and putting them back in the bowl. And I don't even remember if, I guess we fried them probably, or they did. I didn't do that part. Anyway, I fell in the creek. I fell in the creek. So then I was so embarrassed to go back in front of um, some of the people I knew very well uh, were family. And then some of them I didn't know, but especially, you know, in front of Matt to say, yeah, I fell in the creek. That's why I'm wet. That's why I'm totally wet. Like I went swimming. So that's just a funny story about me peeling potatoes. I usually try to make it when I make mashed potatoes. I try to make a lot. For one reason, we really, really like them. Um, so they, especially a night like tonight when Austin and Corey are eating with us too, most all of them will get eaten. They'll be, be gone. Um, of course, there's, you know, we don't mind them left over if they're mashed, we can do that. But I love to make tater cakes out of them. I have a video where Granny shows us how she makes tater cakes out of her mashed potatoes. I'll link to that in the description. Um, so that's a good thing to do with them. And then if I'm not going to do that and we're really not going to eat them, I just put them, um, if I've got, usually I don't have very much, but if I've got at least a cup, I'll put them in the free freezer, put them in a little bag and put them in the freezer. And then the next time I'm going to make an arsh tater cake, I'll have, have my potatoes already ready to go. And if you've not heard about the arsh tater cake, that's my favorite dessert of all times. Mm, I just love it. And I have a video about that, too, that I can link to. Favorite cake of all. Favorite dessert, really. Okay, now I've got them all chopped up. I'm gonna cover them with water. I'll put some salt in there, maybe some pepper. I do it different about every time, but I'll put some salt in there with the water and I'm gonna cook them until they're really soft. Um, and how long that takes depends on how high you cook them. Since it's already four after four o'clock, I'm probably gonna cook them pretty high just so I can try to hurry up supper. Once I get the potatoes done, I'll show you how I make the rest of the mashed potatoes. There are two little tricks that I do that I'll share with you that I think makes them good, but of course I'm only pleasing me and my family. I'm going to put the corn on now. Really simple. Uh, when we put corn up, the way we cook it, lots of different ways to cook it. Granny loves to make cream style corn. I, I think she showed us how to make that too, so I'll, I'll share that in a link too so you can see it. But we do ours, I do mine really simple. Actually, I learned from Matt's daddy, Papa Tony. That's how he does his. So I get all the corn out, all that wonderful little corn juice that's with it. And then I'm, I'll probably put some salt in it, but as far as cooking it, I just put some butter. Since that's two big packs, I'm gonna use, I don't know, this is what's left of a stick of butter. Looks like about three fourths of a cup. And I will just bring it to heat, warm, warm it, warm it through. That's it. That's And it's done once you do that. And I just do it kind of slowly. So I'll set it on the back of the stove while I'm finishing up everything else. I'm ready to mash my potatoes. I've drained the water off of them. And I've got some milk and some butter in this, uh, my measuring cup. And I put it in the microwave for about a minute or so just to melt some of the butter a little bit. But mostly just to bring it to... It's not boiling hot, but at least bring it to room temperature so that it doesn't cool off my potatoes. And I don't really measure how much. I usually start out with this, and then depending on how fluffy or how soft I get the potatoes, I may need to get a little bit more, but this is, this is usually pretty good. So I go ahead and pour some in there, make sure I get the butter in there. I'll save back a little bit just in case, but I usually end up using it all. And then I you know, season with pepper and salt is all I use. That's totally, you know, some people put garlic salt and different, or garlic powder and different things, rosemary and potatoes. Just potato, just pepper and salt is all I use. And many years ago, I, I cannot remember what kind of cooking show I was watching. This is like before the uh, cooking network, really. So it's even before that, a long time ago. Might have been someone like, I don't know. I better not say who I think it was because I really don't know to tell the truth. 
but they said they thought the key to the, and they were like a chef, you know, the key to really good mashed potatoes was most people did not salt them enough. Now, you don't want them to be too salty, but that salt really brought out the flavor of potatoes. Well, so over the years after I heard that, I will salt and then I will taste and then I will salt some more until they, and it really does bring out the, I mean, for me, that was a trick that worked. Now, if you don't like salt or if you have to watch your salt intake, that's definitely not going to work for you. But for me, tasting and then adding more salt until I think they tasted right really worked for me. And I can't remember what the, who the shelf, chef was on TV that I watched. But. And then I have a mixer, and I just start, start in mixing them. Start out slow. So I can already tell because I like mine soft. These these look pretty good for most mashed potatoes that you see, but I'm going to go ahead and add every bit of the rest of my milk. And I'm going to go ahead and get me a spoon and taste to see if I think that I want to add more salt. Definitely want to add more salt. I'm going to put that in the sink. Add me some more salt. It'd be easier to not use a salt shaker, but I've done that, and then I get it too salty. So I don't want to do that. Okay, and I'll mix some more. Okay, I'm going to add, I already know I want to add more milk, so I'm going to have to get me some milk and warm it up in the microwave. And I might add just a little bit more butter. Got more of my hot milk and butter here. I'm gonna add some more. Add almost all of it. At least make sure I get the butter. Okay. I think I'm gonna add the rest of my little bit of milk, but first I'm gonna taste them again and see if what I think about the salt. Mmm, it's getting there. It's good the rest of that rid of my spoon and then add some more salt I think I'll add a little bit more pepper too taste right I can tell the textures textures like I, as you can see they're very very soft that's just how I like my potatoes lots of people don't including granny but hmm. I think that will work that's very good now my cornbread's almost done and once I get everything in the bowls we'll be ready to eat Pork turned out very tender. Looks good. As you can see. Kraut gives it a really good flavor too. I have some pickles. Mm -hmm. Everything looks so good. Even though I cooked it myself, I still think it looks really good. I'm hungry though. Had a busy day and a good hearty meal is going to hit the spot. And some cornbread. I'm going to put some of the, I'm going to get some of the pork and I'm going to put some of the kraut over my, over my cornbread though. Got our cake here too, so we're gonna have a have a good dessert. Some 
our bread and butter pickles. It'll be time to make some more before long. And let me taste my taste the roast here. Get me a bite. It's really tender. Mm. It's really good. I got some mashed potatoes on it. it. Goes so good with that. Some of the kraut. Mm. Got to get some cornbread in a bite though. Perfect ratio of pork roast, kraut, mashed potatoes, and cornbread. Mm. Really, really good. I'm so glad Miss Cindy showed me this simple way to make a pork roast so many years ago. I think she'd be really happy to know that we're still, here we are, she's gone, but we're all here together as a family and we're still enjoying one of the recipes that she taught me. I think that would please her a lot. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make it. It's so simple, just a pork roast and uh, you know, brown it up with flour on the stove, but you don't even have to do that. If you just wanted to put it in, in either a Dutch oven in the oven or in a crock pot and put your kraut over top of it, turns out perfect every time it's so good and then you've got that wonderful kraut kind of as a side dish for your meal if you make a cake of cornbread and some potatoes I mean I went all out with potatoes and the corn it just makes the perfect comfort meal really comforting if you've not picked up your copy of mine and Jim's cookbook I'll leave that information in the description below as always I'm really happy that you stopped by today to help me celebrate Appalachia